Hey everybody and welcome to Conquest of Paradise, Europa Universalis 4, featuring myself. Oh god, I my muscle memory is so busted already. I know. EU4 <laughs> multiplayer, you got me, you got Mattis, you got a room, but you know the deal by now. Say hello. Hi, hi. Hey there. Crusader Kings 2, <laughs> EU4, it's all the same. Yeah, though. Paradox map staring game. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all this Terra Incognita. <laughs> it's yeah, amazing. that is true. It's, it's a major difference. But you guys have boats, man. You should go. Well, I guess you can't explore it. This why this is the new thing. Every episode, I'm like, why don't you guys explore the Terra Incognita? Oh right, conquistadors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> no, I'm I've serious on, though. Uh, I've been working on the economy. I kind of took over a trade post, or at least a land with a trade post in it, uh, the Chesapeake Bay. Yeah. And uh, I'm just trying to work on, on making as much money as I possibly can. I am telling you, now. take the Maya. I wonder why I can't see your Terra Incognita. We're allies, aren't we? Like, show me your stuff. What do you got hidden over there? <laughs> That's what we were talking about. Like, I, I wish that it, it had kind of like a civilization-style diplomacy option where you could, like, trade maps with somebody, but uh -huh. I don't. So, you know. I've only got a couple of provinces, I promise you. There's nothing to worry about. <laughs> sure. <laughs> also, I should mention, I, I forgot to mention this, but at the end of our recording last week, uh, Arumbo was like, hey... Like, how do you not have boats yet? And I realized that I had not taken the native technology that lowered the Diplo technology cost by 100%. So I was actually about to pay, like, an extra 1,000 Diplo points for boats when I didn't Jeez. need to. So Throw. I did do that. And now I will have boats in, like, 53 admin points. Like, nine months. I have the boat fetus inside of me. And within one gestation period, I will birth myself into Antilles Current. That's the origin story for the glorious Mohican Empire. I'm very proud of you. In the grossest way I could put it. <laughs> All right, I, I, I completed my mission. Yay. What was so, your mission, Mathis? To colonize Timakua. So I just, I just finished, I I finished annexing uh, uh, whatever it was, Ontario or whatever up in the other island. Wow, that's like my home province, man. I'm pretty offended. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't understand why I actually can't colonize up there. I don't know you have to be within a certain distance? Yeah, that would be my guess. Yeah, is it too far away from your closest unblockaded core province? No, no it's like Ontario. Like, yeah, it's saying it's too far away. Like, um, Algonquin is uh, 100 distance away. And it's, okay. they border. They border each other. <laughs> it's like, how, how does that work? Oh, you're right, yeah. <laughs> I guess they're just like really far away from each other, technically. Seems silly. What are you going to take for your uh, your national ideas, do you think? Um, I really don't know. I, I, uh, I feel like I'm going to have tons of military points and I'm going to just rely on the first co colonies that come over to catch me mm. up. So I'll probably take my, my, my military idea or something. Could be good. Oh. I, I, I think I have not played an EU4 game where I haven't taken expansion. Like every, I mean, I've played most of them as Castile or England or France, so that sort of makes sense, but I think I always take expansion. Expansion, uh, actually, you know what? Colonization. Continuing to colonize is very effective. And yeah, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. That. that wouldn't be a bad idea. Just I'm because, like, to... otherwise it'll take you, like, an extra 100, 150 years to get uh, explorers and conquistadors, won't it? Yeah, that's true. I don't even remember what I'm doing in this game, really. <laughs> it's like, it's like, why do I have... I'm paying for a level 2 diplomat. Why am I doing this? Um, it's expensive. It is. I don't know why I'm doing it. There's got to be a reason. I have a level one diplomat. Is it is it because of his, of his uh, colonial range increase? No, he's uh, oh diplo rep. That's why he's diplomatic reputation. Mm. And I was trying to annex. That's why. So I'm telling you guys sincerely, all three of us will have boats. We should go take over the Maya. <laughs> <laughs> we could yeah. do it. We. We may have a hundred years until the AI decides to find us. We should make sure that all they find is one glorious oligarchy. I'm trying to figure out this whole trade power thing is what I'm trying to figure out right now. All right, you I stick have... with boring spreadsheets. I'm gonna go conquer the world. <laughs> okay, I says my my guy's transferring 0.0, .0 of its trade power upstream. I don't understand why I even have him out there. Then what's the point? Well, you you uh, automatically transfer trade power like you prop. It's called propagation. You propagate upstream. And okay. But I'm just transferring some, zero point zero. Does that mean he's just doing nothing? No, you're. Well, aren't you collecting from trade in your capital node, Chesapeake Bay? Uh, I am. What is he doing over there? Uh, 
I don't know what he's doing over there. I'm gonna send him over there. <laughs> I have two merchants, and I have one over in the Mrs. Uh, Massachusetts Bay, but it doesn't look like he's doing shit. And then I, I just don't know tr how trade works very well. Okay, hang on. Yeah, he's yeah. collecting. So he, yeah, this guy's collecting from um, Chesapeake Bay. That's what he's doing right now. All right. Um, mm. The other guy is off transferring trade power in the Massachusetts Bay. But I don't. It says Micmac has a merchant here transferring trade power. Micmac is transferring 0, 0.0 of its trade power upstream. Trade power two. I don't understand what the point is. What is he doing? What is he even doing that's useful? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm recalling him. Fuck him. Oh, I'm just. I'm, I'm just. I don't know. Well, he's doing something. Just let him do what he wants to do. <laughs> I need to learn trade. I haven't had time to do it yet. I don't understand trade very much, but it's pretty important. <laughs> but it's useful. It, that's the way I understand it, at least. Mm. So I, I wasn't blowing smoke up your asses. I am building up to my naval force limit right now. We should rumble with these guys. Rumble in the jungle? Exactly. I mean, is it the jungle? I can't really... What are these provinces? I don't know. Navajo? Eh, Apache? It's more like the desert i guess but sure nothing really rhymes with desert does it so uh, not really also how do you increase your uh naval force limit i have never encountered that before because i never build boats naval force limits oh. uh you have to have naval like coastal provinces and it's based on the tax base it also helps mm -hmm. if your capital is a coastal province all right oh i gained an extra merchant yay <laughs> to, to do nothing with. To do jack <laughs> yeah, of course, but... No, see, I put him here, and he's actually... I moved him. I moved him to the Mississippi River, and he's now using their trade power to transport 0 0.1 forward, so he's actually doing something in this one. Oh, you know what? I can actually send, uh... I'll my merchant to this guy well. for now. Fuck him. I'll just do something with him later. Hmm. You can invest in new technology. Um... Oh, I can do the Eastern Swarm technology. That is just like huge force limit increase? I'll do it. Why not? Mm. Bam. I Combat long, with a priest. I wonder really like how long it's going to be until anyone else shows up. The new world ends up showing their freaking ugly mugs. I'm excited to, to wait for it. That's my favorite part. If this ends <laughs> up getting to like episode 50 with no uh, <laughs> new That'd be world amazing. Here, I'm going to be thrilled. Yeah, if it gets to be like 1700. Yeah, we can find them. That's my ultimate goal. Is once we get past like sixteen fifty, if they're not here, we're going to find them. This right? Is, yeah. Well, great. we should be good enough to go find them at that point. Hopefully, yeah, every video we're going to be like, "Oh, I'm sure they're coming soon." Yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> See you next video. <laughs> They'll be here next time. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, <laughs> got a feeling they're on their way. Totally. I need to build some boats. Build a ship. Which is the ones that patrol the trade routes? Galleys? Uh, cogs wait. are... What are cogs? They're transports, right? Yes. Okay, this cogs galleys are cheap warships that are very cost-effective in inland seas where they receive blah, blah, blah. I'm assuming galleys, the middle ship, is the one that'll patrol trade routes, no? I actually Sparks. don't know anything about the Navy. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm just reading. Barks have... Three trade power? That is, how does that make any sense? Trade power gives extra power to the trade node currently defended. Okay, so I want to bark. Yeah. You should well. be a dog then. <laughs> <laughs> Chesapeake Bay, um, though, you already have like a, a huge portion of the. Well, I guess, yeah. I guess you could. I mean, barks are fine. I'm going to have him send. I'm going to send this one probably over to um, Mississippi River trade node. I don't know what that's going to do, but I'm going to do it. God dang it, and you can't stop me. Man, this this war up here, this trying to fight up here in this like Arctic region is just miserable. Is it, is it like crazy attrition? I just keep losing battles, and yeah, I'm suffering 12% attrition. Severe Jesus. winter, plus 5%. Arctic, yeah. plus 1%. I'm pretty sure most winters are fairly severe at the Arctic Circle. You would think. I mean, it makes sense. <sighs> well, Cold over there all the time. <laughs> I guess. Who are you fighting? Uh, Huron. I'm okay. Hire mercenaries. So, are you at war with uh, Cheyenne and Fox right now as well? Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, no, Shawnee. I'm, I'm at war with the Cheyenne. Yeah, Cheyenne Sioux, the Illiniwik, and Huron. Good. Lots of them. Yeah. To put it mildly. I, I get where you're coming from there. Uh, oh. I may try to opportunistically jump in on that war, actually. How, how are you going to jump in? Well, I'll just declare war on the Illinois and try to take their uh, southernmost province there. Well, they're, they're a part. Do you want me to just call you into the war? That way you uh, have to take a stability drop. Mm, yeah, that would actually be ideal, I suppose. Thank you very much. Now you can just go over there and separate piece them. Yeah, okay. Thank you. I'm not going to help Mathis, though. <laughs> Mathis, you just stay here. <laughs> you, <laughs> okay. Mathis has boats. He should be in I on this I just built my already. first boat, man. Yeah, I, I mean, there's it. there's other people. You could go take the Sioux. There's another... If you guys want land over here... All right, this guy's going to protect the, protect the Mississippi trade node. Now, one thing I notice is different is... Um, like, when you click on a province, you notice the top, it says terrain. Okay. There's like a, there's like a picture now. Yeah. And it wasn't that way before. Like, some of them actually show terrain, mountains. I'm not sure if that's just the primary thing, or if that's actually telling you this is the type of terrain you're going to be fighting in. Huh. Mm. That's true, yeah. Which, Forest, would, be, which would be preferable, because I hate the system of random... It's just stupid. Because it's always <laughs> mountains. It's never what they say it is. Mm -hmm. Alright, time this... to start building some uh, transport ships, I guess. Yeah, man, build some cogs. Get in on this. Because pretty soon, once we get all of our you know delicious seal reserves up here, we can get our manpower up, and then we go to war with the Maya. Got a couple cogs on the way. So y this is probably something you already know, but uh, each cog can only hold one regimen. Oh, really? Only one? Yeah. Oh, shit. Okay. I have, like, a lot. Hmm. When you're at war with someone, can you take your ships to port in their port? You can, like, land your troops there, but if you, oh, okay. if you occupy it, and yeah, you can... You can, uh, oh god, this general that I got is awful. Sorry, I know I interrupted you. Oh, it's no worries. I I just... You, do you still get like a huge morale penalty when your troops are leaving? Or not morale penalty, but like a, a negative modifier when your troops land? Yeah, negative two. Ugh, because... I can't like land my troops anywhere. <laughs> we'll get military, I, I could, military access from the Shawnee. Uh, oh yeah, actually they are positive to me. You get military access from them, and then you dock in there. Good land. guy, Arumba, is managing all of our games for us. Right, that's how it works. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, you, like the last, well, it was last video, right, where you were like, "Oh, I've got to wait two thousand points for my technology." Yeah, <laughs> you basically saved my life there. Um. So having a ship patrolling the trade route and protecting it, outside of just protecting it, does that really do anything? Does it give me more money? That'd be good. Doesn't it keep more trade power, like, directed where you want it to go? That'd be cool. I thought that was how it works. It might um, be. As soon as I stop, like, losing battles, I could I totally help talk about trade. <laughs> but, but, like, I just took a negative two crossing. I can't... This It's just... This terrain is just miserable to fight it. Mm. I've got two cogs so far. Oh, my God. I'd take the longest route if I want to dock because I have a terra incognita right next to the Pawnee settlement. Yeah. Ooh, good government policies. I can gain one stability, gain 25 of all the powers, or just gain money. I'm going to go with stability. I'm at three stability now. Three? Why mm -hmm. would you do such a thing? I don't fucking know. You're just asking for... Uh, what am I asking I forget for? What I was, uh, negative stability drop events. All right, Bring so it on. I, uh, I'm ready to end my war, so if you want to... Oh man, that sucks. Finish. finish. <laughs> you gotta finish. It's at minus. Seat. It's at minus thirty-five percent. So I'm gonna. I'll try. So the you idea, could, by the way, is go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. You you could uh, pull some troops down here if you want to. Yeah, I think I'll get military access through the Shawnee and take on the Sioux. So the idea right now is to not invest any in any of these native advancements, right? Like, no. there's no point. Native advancements are fine. The thing to not invest in, unless you need it, is the actual technology. Because when when you border a Western nation, you're just going to immediately like teleport up to their tech level, minus two. Oh my God! I lost all six of my cogs. 
You just leave them at sea? That was awesome. No, like, I, I thought this would be over faster, but I, I forgot that they gained, like, base attrition for the number of, like, months that they were at sea. So I sent them back to try to, like, uh, get to my coastal province, but they all died in transit. Good. It's pretty unfortunate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he sounded real interested. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's, it, it's almost... The, uh, the siege is almost over here. Whatever, I'll just start building troops over here now. That's the well, last time I need boats. Yeah, the, the only issue you're going to run into is that um, here's how you're going to probably want to do it. If you full annex it and then keep them, you won't be able to core it. So, you're so gonna wanna, I uh, full annex vassal. and then release as vassal. Yeah. Okay. And then you got to so wait. So don't just don't just take them as a vassal. Just annex them first. You you could take them as a vassal if it'll let you. Would it, yeah. would it accomplish the same thing? Yeah, but I think that it might cost you more points. I'm not sure. Okay. I just Let's figure out. You're either paying admin points, or it's just I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it! They took control of my settlement in like three seconds. I hate this game. <laughs> game right. too hard. Disband. So I'm in a separate piece here. I only have 53% war score though. Oh, it might be a lot higher after you destroy them there. No, you have higher individual war score from with that target because you occupied it. Like, the best way to look at your individual war score, in the bottom right corner where you can, you can see the wars, right? Mm. Open up the war interface. Yep, yeah, I'm there. And then hover over Mahikan on the war goal, like on the left side of the screen. And it uh, says, okay. individual yeah. war score against Huron 99. So even okay. though the war is at 55, that's my war score. Your individual I war score it. is higher. All right. So, demand tribute. Huron will become a Mahican vassal. That's probably not what you want. Huron? No. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you should try that. I don't think you could agree. They wouldn't agree to it anyway. They, they would agree to it, actually. Huron would agree to become your vassal? Yeah, I'm not going to take it because that would be like incredibly dickish, but there you go. Um, <laughs> okay, I have, I have sent my piece to them and they've accepted. So now Illy Newick is, is my vassal. Also, they sent me like a hundred ducats. What up with that? They're just happy to see you. I guess so, yeah. Um, so now I should start the process of improving relations and annexing. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, I found you another... Some more land was just exposed. I don't know if I should start colonizing it. So you need 190... And it's been your vassal for at least 10 years. Got mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. No worries. <clears throat> Should probably build some more boats, though. How do I make someone my rival again? Oh, uh, open up your screen. Like, go to your own diplomacy. View your country. And then in, like, the red and black shield where it there, says rivals. There. Awesome. Somebody. Thank so we're going we're gonna to rival the Maya. And uh, then we're going to go to town on them. Is that what's going on? If you rival somebody, do you get a do you get a cost of belly on them? No, you just gain the listed bonuses like uh, increased prestige from battles. You gotcha. can embargo them for free. It's easier to spy on them. Okay. This game is complicated. I think, it, I think I made it a is, really poor decision. I was I, I was starting to do like the Arumba strategy of getting two colonies going at once. I don't think it's. I'm not doing that. <laughs> One at a the, time for me. It's it's making the colonies grow so slowly, and it's killing me from like a colonial maintenance standpoint. But I guess it, the thing is, you could get like five or six going at once, and then mm. no, there's no way you could afford it. Five or six, it's crazy. I mean, I'm only losing a ducat a month right now. That is enough to survive for like ten years, even if I don't fight any wars. Mm -hmm. But it goes up like um, the first colonies to Ex gold, and then it's. And then it's a 100% increase, then 400%, then 900%. Oh, okay. I did not know that. Yeah, each colony above your colonist count is uh, penalized. So That'll be a problem. Three colonists, and you can have three colonies for cheap. Mm. Do, you, do you have a good relationship mm -hmm. with the Shawnee? Uh, yeah, actually. They're at positive 31 for some reason. Okay. I, I'm going to keep them buffed up here because they're the only thing that scares the crap out of me right now. That and, you know, eventually when the old world discovers us, not only as the old world discover us, but now a Roomba can go to town on us. But that's a long distance away, hopefully. Okay. 
Hmm. Where do you guys rank in terms of like everything right now? Uh, how do I check? Hover over like the zero under the date. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. No. Oh. Uh, that's gonna be Ryan. Close yeah, that's gonna be me. All right. Uh, my rank right now, just so we can wrap that yeah. up, is my administrative rank is ninety fifth. Okay. My diplomatic rank is eighty ninth, and my military rank is fifty first. Hey, that's not so bad. How about you, Aruma? Um, I am ranked 23rd in admin, 97th in diplo, 143rd in military. All right, I'm 66th, 147th, and 48th. I don't know why, for some reason, I was expecting you to have, like, some top 10, like, <laughs> have banked some points already. Yeah. But in any case, I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. We're starting to get some uh, more <laughs> preparation done for the pre-conquest of the Maya. It's going to happen. I guarantee it. As always, if you enjoyed the episode, make sure to show your support by clicking the like button or subscribing to us and or subscribing to us, I guess. New videos do come out every single day, and you can check out our multiple viewpoints by checking out the links in the video description below to check out other people's channels. As always, thanks for watching. We'll be back tomorrow with another episode. See you next time. Bye. See you soon.